ahead and uh, what, what is the proper term for opening a meeting? Let's go ahead and open the meeting. Let's go ahead and open the meeting at 622 now. You can call it to order. All right. Good. Good evening. Welcome to the March 1st uh, Brookfield Board of Selectmen meeting. Let's go ahead and rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So uh, we have a number of announcements. The first is the election vacancy announcements. Um, so as many of you may know, um, it's open now for picking up nomination papers for vacancies within uh, the town. Um, the 14th is the last day to pick Yeah, them up. it's getting close to the end. The 14th is the last day to return them, I believe. Yeah, and take them out. Five o'clock in the afternoon, they have to be in. Okay, great. So, um, so we've got, we're about two weeks out. Uh, the only vacancy with no nomination papers taking, taken out as yet is the trustee for Shade Tree Funds uh, and assessor. Uh, for the nomination papers have been taken out for moderator, cemetery commissioner, town clerk, constable, board of health, elementary school committee, Tantasco school committee, you want me to read the names off as well, or no? Because, no, because okay. they could uh, pull out. Yep. You know, water, water commissioner, trustee for library. There's uh, two select, trustees. There's two trustees for the library, library. and then uh, a member of the board of uh, selectmen, and then planning board. And then, um, Linda, did, did you have an announcement? Yep, I have an announcement. Okay. Um, I was wanted to please advise that I have taken out nomination papers to retain my seat as a member of the Board of Selectmen. Since no one has taken out papers and I have not heard of any such interest, I decided I would step up to keep the Board of Selectmen an active full board. It is important to have a full board in order to conduct town business efficiently. As you know, I have a 34-year history of service to the town of Brookfield and that I was born and raised in. And while I'm running for selectmen again, I may be compelled to step down after the first year if a su suitable candidate tosses their hat into the ring. Thank you for your support over the years. I am confident in retaining the current board as it is and will enable us to continually to successfully manage the town of Brookfield's affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so we also wanted to let everyone know that we've received $800,000 as part of the Massachusetts mm -hmm. Community Development Block Grant Program. So you all may recall we went through a bunch of, of projects uh, coordinated with the CMRPC to apply for the grant, and uh, we did indeed receive it. Um, and that will be administered by the CMRPC on our behalf uh, so that uh, that was all incorporated into the overall grant planning. So we'll get more information out to the town about the plan and the timing uh, once we receive that from CMRPC. So, and just a reminder, the winter parking ban is still in effect uh, through April 1st. Uh, from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., any vehicle in the town right-of-way will be ticketed and towed at the owner's expense. Uh, and then next on the agenda is, can we receive a report on the warrants signed? Oh, okay. I signed, I signed the warrants. Uh, it was last week on 2-22-22, and, and I have an expense warrant for 2-22-22 for $264,261.87. A payroll warrant for two twenty three twenty two for one hundred seventy eight thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars and forty one cents, and a withholding warrant for two twenty three twenty two for sixty five thousand four hundred and forty five dollars and sixty eight cents. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything about any of the warrants or the? The funding? No, everything was fine. I looked it all over. There was no questions on anything. Okay. 
Um, so the next thing on the agenda, and that's why I'm flipping through my phone because I just wanted to pull it up for reference. Um, so town hall mask mandate discussion. Um, I, I sent you a picture of the CDC's uh, page for actually as of today. Right. And Brookfield is at 5.08 percent. So there are 11 people who tested positive in the last two weeks. Um, that's that's everybody. That's everybody. That's everybody. Okay. Yeah. And, and their recent, their their current. Does that classify us as a high community level, or is that considered low? So long as it's low, under 8%? we're not. We're not even on. Don't have any no. color on the map. No color on no, the map. No color on the map. Okay. No. So the overall state is is at about um, two percent. Right. So we're mm. running a little higher than them, but but, but yeah. But overall, we, we, we seem to so lag. We we seem gotta, to lag a little bit. We've got to take this into context, though. Right. The town of I think it's Mount Washington. It's the furthest west, most southern town in Massachusetts. Is at a hundred percent, right? But, but they, they only people. have one test, so <laughs> yep. they're at a hundred percent. So right. they're showing up completely right. blue on the map. So yep. they're, 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 yeah. they're basically the only high risk yeah. town, town with one person with COVID. So um, we okay. currently have approximately 400 people in the entire state that are in the hospital with COVID mm. right now. Yeah, so so we're at that point where. Um, Seems like we're past this wave mm -hmm. fundamentally. Yeah, yeah the, the yeah. spike was was crazy. If you look at the graph on um, the state's COVID nineteen response webpage, it was the, insane. Actually, the spike was crazy. Um, in the beginning of January, there were two thousand people a day with COVID, and now the mm -hmm. average um, for the day, I it's think, like a couple hundred across yeah. The, yeah, across the state mm -hmm. is about is about two hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so. I think the question we really want to talk about, I think, I know, I know I would feel comfortable if we lifted the mask mandate mm -hmm. for the town hall, yeah. right? I mean, that's inconsistent with the guidelines yeah. from the I CDC. Think, I feel the same way. It's, yeah. I feel people's personal preferences if they want to wear a mask. I don't know that it's always personal preference if they want well, to wear a mask, but I think under the current stats, I'd say it's people's personal preference as to whether yeah. they want to wear a mask. That's how I feel. Um, I think what we want to have the discussion about tonight, though, is what's the trigger to be more proactive when the next wave of this hits? Because I don't know that we're done with nasty variants, and um, the next one, as we get farther away from the original thing, even for folks who are vaccinated, it may get less and less effective as this stuff gets out in the wild and mutates. Um, so what do we want to establish from a standpoint of do we track to CDC recommendations? Do we, the next time a variant comes out, tell folks to mask up until there's some determination about transmissibility and, and, and what have you, you know, what, what makes sense both from a science and a, and a cultural perspective? It what I've kind of been following is what the state has recommended. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the past two and a half years. We've lagged about two to three weeks behind what happens in Boston fundamentally. Yeah, so it's usually what happens in Boston will soon come out here. But it's also the state itself has been, you know, New England as a whole has been considered really good mm -hmm. or better than average. Yeah. Of other places across the country in terms of when it happens, like keeping track of it and the data that comes yeah. in, like Massachusetts data has tended to be a little more on top of it than like the CDC's has because they're looking across the country, right. whereas at the state house they're just looking in Massachusetts. So I, I mean, I would go by what they have for the, um, how Massachusetts publishes the numbers. And then if we see so, that, mm. that, if, that it's starting to come out this way, then we have a discussion again. So you're going to follow the Massachusetts protocol or just follow the numbers and make your own protocol? I would, my thought would be both. No, sorry. It would be to 
follow the Massachusetts numbers as they come west, and then take the guidance from the Massachusetts, from the health department for the state. So they've, they've made masking um, optional yeah. in schools and on buses. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So the only places that they're required are healthcare facilities. Yep. Um, and I think there were two places. Public transportation, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah, yeah. I think, I think federal. public transportation yeah, is. A, I think that's a federal. Yeah, that, that's still a federal one. So, which yeah. makes sense because you really don't know who you're next to on the bus. No. <laughs> it's true, but they just <laughs> made the school buses a mask optional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, they are too. Which was weird, but yeah. that's a. A whole other story. Well, yeah. not everybody can just get on a school bus. No. So the, even no. though it's yeah. public school right. and it's, it's public it's not, transportation it's, for the yeah. school kids, is still a very mm. select group. Yeah, it's yeah. not the same as the bus that goes from here to Worcester. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what I've been following and groups that I'm a part of have been following, been following the state guidelines for when they say to wear yeah. masks or their recommendations mm. for wearing masks. Yeah, I know that's what my workplace is doing because I sent you a copy of what they send out and they base it on the community transmission rate mm -hmm. in the area around my employer. So, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least if you're coming on site. Yeah, so, yeah it's the same for mine. Yeah. They're, they're in Boston, so they base it off of Boston. They don't take into mm -hmm. account that you know, I'm not here, but mm -hmm. that's kind of what so, how I've been going by. Well, I, I think I think adopting whatever the state guideline is at the time. Um, there are going to be some people who won't like that, though, because as soon as there is another spike, I'm sure the state employees will be masking up some mm -hmm. of the first ones in the state to do it. Okay. But I, I, think I, would, I think I would concur with that. Whatever yeah. the state is giving for a guideline for the state and for state employees is what we should yep. do for our town hall. Because um, I know, like, the library, they, it's... Um, your own it's optional whether you want to wear a mask in there or not mm -hmm. they had that posted because i go to the library quite often <clears throat> so apparently the library is following the state so do you want to yeah. make a motion to follow the state guidelines yeah. yeah yeah okay i'll make i'll make that motion to follow the state guidelines i'll second are you yeah, I'll second. okay all in favor aye aye, aye. good yeah I got a cold though, so I'm gonna leave mine. Now. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> That's actually one of the things somebody was telling me that she's wearing her mask out anyway, just not because of COVID, but because that since COVID started, she hasn't had a single cold or yes. flu since the whole thing. I, I, had heard, I had a school teacher tell me that 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 none of the children who sees on her, and she hasn't been sick once, and she's normally sick four or five that times yeah. at this point in the school yeah. year. So. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had somebody this weekend who's, who I know is just like, yep, yeah, I'm still wearing it just because I'm really enjoying that catching colds. <laughs> yeah, I, I caught one. It, it's it's uh, but the thing it's is, turning into a but a lot of times, you know, you you wear it. And you're, where, you're, you know, you're taking in like, you know, carbon dioxide, your own, and a lot of people are getting sick from that because you're breathing in all your own all the time. Then if they're getting sick from that, they're not wearing appropriate masks because it, yeah, no it doesn't, ma it But doesn't. no mask actually is appropriate. You'll, you'll hear that even from a lot of your doctors when they speak. I've heard that from physicians. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing that's really appropriate for a mask. They've also yeah, heard I'm the not opposite. sure about the yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about the science on that, quite frankly, because I mean that's I mean that's the whole reason why people wear like and that people wear N95 masks working, doing construction mm -hmm. work and what have you all the time, and it doesn't necessarily affect well, their. Breathing. I have that's what we have at home is the N95. Right, so you know it's um, I, I I don't know that I would start saying that the masks like hold in carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is a lot yeah. much smaller a mo molecule than what the N95 filters well, so there's no reason why well, I've heard this is what I've heard doctors say from so. it could be then related to the specific masks mm. that the people are yeah, yeah. so yeah. what was next on the agenda street mm -hmm. lights okay street, okay. street lights so we had gotten some, I had seen the mail traffic from Ryan, though it didn't necessarily answer any of the questions. What he, what he got back to us with was that um, that he's 
interested in supporting adding some lights to River Common and Route 9. Now that's... Kimball uh, Street. I've, I've taken a ride down Kimball. Yeah. It is dark. It is dark. Yeah. It is. Where, the, where this house, it is, she's the third one from the street when you're going down to get back onto Mill Street, and there's nothing down there. It, it ends way up the other end. It is very dark down there. Yeah. Um, and it looks like we've got like a whole selection of requested street lights, including mm -hmm. Quaybog Street by the boat ramp. Yep. I was there is a light down there because because right across from the boat ramp you've got um, Herbert Road with the where the wells are, and there is a street light down there. So I don't know why they want more street that lights. The, that's not the boat ramp, though. That's the parking area, right? No, no. You go down. You go down Quaybog Street, mm -hmm. and just before you get to the boat landing, that's a left. It's called oh, that's Herbert right. Road, yeah, okay. and that's where the wells are. And there's I a big know. light right out on the street there. Okay. And I don't know why they think they need more out on the uh, boat ramp. I mean, that's state state owned if they, so, so they let, want let more. Let me ask a question. Have we, I mean, it sounds like National Grid's been pretty much useless, but have we asked for a map of the street lights in town? Not that I'm aware of. Can we ask for a map of the street lights in town? I don't know, Karen. Can we get a map? We can <laughs> ask. I yeah. don't know yeah. it is, but I can reach out to our representative and ask. Yeah. At I mean, and, and, and if not, can we just get a town employee to do a survey of what lighting we have where? And who would you suggest? <laughs> I know highway is short handed, but something that can be done regardless of the weather unless it, unless we've got a snow emergency. Did Sue shot hand it down? Are they all back to work? I thought they were all back. They are, but three people does not make for a yeah. very large crew. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's but a if you wanted to bring in if you wanted actually. to bring in I wouldn't even object if you wanted to bring in one of the seasonal operators to, to do the survey. You know, let's actually let's actually map it out. Let's take a look at these locations on that map. Mm -hmm. Let's actually pretend like we're doing it as a plan, or make some reasonable effort to to have some sort mm -hmm. of method to our madness. Because we could overlay it onto either something from the assessor, yeah, or yeah. Google, even just Google Maps if we wanted to yeah. play over that and just. Because because um, it sounds like like that Kimball Street where it comes into basically it's where it comes into Mill Street. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, Mill Street is lit. Parts of Kimball yeah. are lit. That portion of Kimball was not lit. It, it, is it would dark, make yeah. it would potentially mm -hmm. make sense to mm -hmm. not just at that house, but maybe uh, just Continue a couple that. along the way. Yeah. yeah. And actually get it. But then we also need to. I'd rather see it as a true plan, get the actual costs of the mm -hmm. installation. They may install them for free, but then the problem is the pay in the pole fee, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. that's where, where that's going to hit, where that's going to hit is going to be, do we know roughly what our cost per pole is? Because I know we've got the bills. No. No. We, we do have the bills, so we could figure that out. And I think, doesn't each pole get its own bill or something crazy? No. Okay. No. No. But it's not all on one bill. There's like several different. There's like street four, or four. I think there's uh, one. There's one, two, at least four, four or five. But yeah. we have more than four or five lights. So. No, yeah, we have plenty yeah. more than four or five lights. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, let's 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 try to map out what we have in town. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Yep. Um, Ask Ryan, maybe he could bring in his normal summer seasonal person. Just have just him bring in up. somebody yep. part time. If he doesn't have time to do it with the folks that he's got. Because I think he's got budget to. Does he have budget to, to bring somebody on temporarily if he needs to? He does have seasonal wages, but he's using them. Yeah. Okay. So I saw a payroll go through for two people that mm. were paid yeah. out of seasonal wages. Yep. Okay. So I'm not sure what they were doing, but yeah, because we only hired people out of snow and ice, right? I mean, for plowing and stuff. So right. 
No, I said check and see what he's mm -hmm. got left. And well, if National Grid will give us the map, then you don't have to worry. Yeah, if National Grid will that. give us yeah. the map, mm -hmm. let's start there, right? Um, I would expect that they should have to be able to give that to us. Um, well, and the other thing would be we could find we could find out whoever did the aerial. They they are will actually sometimes do certain types of things on the cheap. The company that did the aerials for KP because they oh. have stuff. They have stuff like uh -huh. down to that level of detail. Yep. So if we asked them, if we said, hey, could we get a map with our street lights on it? We might be able to get it for a couple hundred bucks. Because all they have to do is press a button to give you the data. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have that level of detail. Mm -hmm. And just let them know that we, we wanted the information so that we can try to put together a street light plan. And then okay. that way, if we can get account of the street lights and we can see what we're spending on them, we can make a decision in part based on how mm. much it's going to cost us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and consider it from from both the cost benefit perspective. No lights on like 148 or Route 9 or something. That's the state, correct? That would be the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. And that's where some of them we may be able to see if the state would. Yeah. Bring them in because we think Where'd it's a safety say, thing. Um, uh, route 9 and 148, so those are state roads. Yeah. Well, because I mean, a, a lot of the times where I've wondered, like one of the things I, you know, when we first moved here, I always told my friends, like, make sure you, your headlights are good, you're not missing anything, because there are a lot of headlights yeah. down towards the back roads of Brookfield or streetlights. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that's always been commented is when you come to an intersection or a corner or a turnoff, there's often not a light. Mm. Yeah. So you can't see where maybe the end of the road is because we don't have curbs everywhere mm -hmm. right. and stuff like that. So if the state would even you know, down 9 and 48, be able to just kind of plop them, plop them down where yeah. intersections are. I think they potentially won't necessarily because of cost either. One of the things... Yeah, really but there are, there are some that are more dangerous than others. They either have sharp corners or the, the fall off of the road is a lot steeper than but, other places. But a lot of times, so like you say, State 148 and them, they're state highways, but, but they don't, the state's not out there plowing 148, say, for an example, down by Tantasca, but the town takes care of it. Right. Yeah. So, so the state's not going to take care of those But the state pays for roads. the road maintenance, correct? Right? Like, they, the, they pay for repairing the road. And, yeah, they do repair the yeah. road. And like 15 but feet still or 10 they, feet off the road. But still they don't maintain the roads. The town maintains the roads. Right. And I'll now, like Ryan said down here on Quaybog, around the boat landing, I mean, the, st the state owns the boat landing. So, I mean, yep. they should approach the, boat, the state to put more lighting down there if somebody feels that we need lights down there. Mm. I'm just looking to see what um, the, ex the last expenditure report that we got. Oh, in terms of how much? So I can see left. how much we have left in that budget, but the email doesn't work as nicely as it should when it's on my phone. So ah, okay. fair enough. For search so, purposes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the first step is really seeing if we can get it from National Grid. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's their lights. Mm -hmm. They should have an overlay. They should know where all of their poles are that have lights on them. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but if they don't have it, actually, I think the second step would be to contact those folks that do the do the mapping. You could even ask down at the highway department if they have it, because they have all kind of maps down there. See if they have them. Yeah, they may have one. Because mm -hmm. I know I had to go down a few years ago and look something up on a map, yeah. and they had them. Before we start like plunk making decisions to plunk lights down, let's actually look at yeah. what the lighting. If I have to drive around with a map, I will. But but ask them, ask, ask them at the highway department if they have one. I, I wouldn't doubt it. They might have one. Let's down ask there. National Grid first, oh, okay. and, and then so now we've got a plan of attack. Yep. We'll ask yep. National Grid, then mm -hmm. we'll ask Ryan if he's got yep. one. If they don't have one, we'll check with KP to see if they have any orthophotography. Yep. Mm -hmm. If they do. Good. If not, yeah. last resort. Ask, yeah. the, ask for yeah. a, a mapping uh, of the yeah. town. Of the town. Yeah. Let's try the let's try the big boys first, and then if we have to, we 
By then it'll be spring and it won't be a nasty job. Yeah. <laughs> Might actually be kind of enjoyable to drive around with the windows open and just check. Check. Okay. I didn't get you sick. No, you didn't get me sick, and I'm trying not to not to cough on you. If you want, I'll put my mask back on. I think I'm allergic to something in the town hall that the damn mask was keeping out. <laughs> Oh, all right. Next thing on the agenda is award annual town report printing. So it looks like we had three bids come in country press uh, for $1,533.63. Alpha graphics at um, $1,993.00. And then select print. Um, $2,175.00. So, uh, according to this, our lowest bid would be Country Press. Um, yeah, um, you, you, can, you can pick that one, but because it's under $50,000, we don't have to. You don't need to go out to bid for yeah. this, first of all. Okay. Um, and second, if, you, if, you're, you know, if it's under $10,000, you don't need to even get quotes. You yeah. just need to work with whomever you feel is okay. a good um, person. Oh. But you went through the process, yeah. so it's right to award it to the lowest yeah. bidder. Okay. I do have one question about that, though. Mm -hmm. did, did we, how, how did we select who we sent it out to bid, or how did we do um, that? People that expressed interest, or okay. basically we've been sending them up to about the same for. Did you, did you try the place down in Charlton as well? Um, uh, I think it's BT. I don't know. BT? I don't know. I, I they're don't know. where? Are they the one that used to do the Brookfield Citizen? Them. I'm not sure if they were one of them. I'm going to tell you one reason why Country Press, though, keeps coming up the cheapest. And if they've been, I, you folks used them even before I came on board seven years ago. Um, Gary Fuller, who <clears throat> runs Slot Print, he told me, he said, it's impossible for anyone to compete with Country Press because they're a wholesaler. Ah, okay. So this is why there's so much, they're going to be yeah. cheaper than anybody. Okay. That's just the way it is. They and are in Lakeville. Like I said, we've used them for we haven't had any, seven, eight we, years. We haven't had any problems with no. them giving no. out. No, no they do a nice so town good. report. Yeah. Okay. They really have been good. So we didn't necessarily have to send it out to bid, but no, no. So under, under 10,000, yeah. you don't have to, you, no. you don't have to solicit quotes. You don't have to. Okay. You can work so we can probably avoid doing that in the future on this. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Okay, that's one last thing. They raised the threshold a few years ago. It was different when you had to go out and do an RFP for anything over ten thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, and then anything. I don't remember. I don't even want to remember what the numbers were. We had to so solicit. So do we need to quotes. vote this, or should we just go ahead and? and you do not uh, need to vote hmm. that, no. No. But you can. You can. Yeah. Say who we awarded it to, probably. So, so I, I'm, if you're comfortable working with them here, let's go ahead and, yeah, and work with them. It's been a winner. They've been with us forever, and they've been bid every, every year. Okay. And then the next is a discussion on the process for declaring stuff surplus. No, actually, you have, you have a process in place. So what we have in the basement is a phenomenal amount of printers that don't work anymore. Yeah. And in order for us to bring them down to the recycle center, they need to be declared surplus. <laughs> so if you would be so kind as to declare all of the unusable printers in the basement surplus, I can have people bring it down to the okay. recycle and the transfer station for the electronics division. Okay. I'll make this motion if you want. I'd like to make a motion to uh, declare there's all kind of Printers down in the basement. Unusable printers. Unusable I printers. There are some monitors. Some there monitors. Are some um, hard drives, which will so, be which will be appropriately destroyed yeah. prior yeah. to being brought to the transfer. Okay, so we have a big we have a giant magnet that we yeah. can run across. Okay. Oh, no, we have a hammer and a screwdriver. Oh, oh yeah. even better. Those are my favorite kind. It's actually a degausser. Is the, the name of, is the yeah. name of the tool. I used to do that. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, they, they will definitely be wiped before okay. they're So I would out. just like to make a motion to uh, declare any electronic equipment that's in the basement. Uh, that's non-functional. That's it's not functional. functional. As they can go to surplus. the surplus. <laughs> just they put can, brand new servers yeah. in that the they server can, room. They can go to the um, landfill. 
No, they can go oh, to the transfer. Oh, the transfer station. station. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, I call the landfill the same thing. To the transfer station. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, and then we have correspondence. We've got a retirement letter from Constable Tatro. So, Tatro. Tatro. Um, so uh, this is from Arthur C. Tatro. Uh, Honorable Board of Selectmen, after much consideration, I have decided not to seek re-election to the position of constable. Um, it's an appointed in position. Having held this position for over four decades, I believe it's time to retire. Since I have also held this position appointed in Brookfield for many years, yeah. I want to let you know as soon as possible about my decision to retire. And I wish to thank the town and departments for their continued support over the years. Well, thank you. The reason we had, I've known Arthur all the years, the reason we had him was because we never had a um, constable who was able to do, you know, serve any kind of warrants or, you know, or they go around, um, like, with their warrants and serving anything like, say, if the ZB, uh, say, if the zoning board, uh, no, who is he? The if zoning Nick, enforcement. Zoning enforcement officer. If he has to have something on, you know, served on a person, we never had anybody to do that until recently, the last few years. Okay. Because we have our own constables. This is why they always appointed Arthur to do that. Ah, okay. And he was Dick does it now. Yeah, Dick yeah. does it now. Dick yeah. does it all. So we don't need him. So, great. Do you want to send a letter of appreciation? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we should. I, I think, think he's been be doing nice. this for what, for us, for 40 oh. years? I think that's the oh, last yeah. He's been around a long time. Okay. And that is it for our agenda. So wow. Can I get a motion to uh, adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn at 6.53. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.